You showing your picture there, John? Oh, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, okay. All right, John. How are you? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay? All right. I can hear you. Have we had your breakfast? Uh, yeah, I have. I was finishing up my right. breakfast. To all of us. All right. What was that? All of a sudden now, because I disagree with somebody. All of a sudden now, because I disagree with with somebody in the Benninger crew, that uh, somebody's taking a quick trip up to heaven and rub my name out of the Lamb's Book of Life with their big fat holy eraser. <laughs> uh, wow. It, I mean, it, it's funny. I mean, this is the same stuff that Denlinger cult would do. You know, you disagree with them, you're lost. You know, it's like they did it with Tim. Yeah. I mean, they're they're saying they're saying to me that I'm still a Denlinger right because I said that you know I've left Denlinger's call, but I don't reject, I don't accept the heresies heresies of defending rights. That somehow still makes me a Denlinger right. You know, it's like, okay, this is false dichotomy. Yeah, I mean, I I got kicked out. Well, if you can call it that, I mean, I don't even see it as being kicked out, but I got kicked in the teeth by you know who, right? Calling me a Jesuit, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, because I'd had a conversation with King's Table on his channel, I think they all assumed I was part of their crew, and that was not that's not true. And that, that fact is illustrated by the way that they dealt with Jeremy Carter. Like they were putting a scalp, I mean, I know I use this phrase a lot in the last week or so, putting a scalp in their wigwam as though if you leave the Denlingers and you come and talk to somebody in the Benningers, all of a sudden you're part yeah. of their group. And that's not true either. I think the reason why they do that is because when Jeremy got kicked out of the Denlinger call, he did go over to Max Bauer and those guys. So they assume, because one person did it, they assume that everyone who leaves Denlinger's call will yoke up with the people who just, you know, who are like the arch enemies of Denlinger. You know, that they assume that they did that with him, they did that with me. You know, they have this false dichotomy. They have this big persecution complex. Yeah, and that's cultic in itself, isn't it, I think? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a website called culteducation.com, and they, you know, it's a basic fact that they, well, they mentioned it too, the website, but the, it's a basic fact that persecution complex is one of the red warning flags of a cult. Yeah. I'll just play a little bit more of this because I've just got some screenshot images and I was just going to comment on bits of it. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a point. I made yesterday, John. I had yeah. this image off uh, Google. But they never, not one of them, I mean, Max Bauer, in fairness to him, as I said yesterday, I think he has done something exposing Catholicism and the horror of Babylon, but on the others. have done any such thing in the last, at least, as far as I'm aware. Same here too. I mean, they'll come out against everyone, but like they never go after the Roman Catholic Church. Your, your audio is cutting out. You still there? So they're not. They're not I mean, I don't know any Christian, right? King Christian doesn't tell us when when and. Not one of them has done anything else like who's a KJV. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? But then there's also there's also the thing of also the factor too of how they like there's that Alex Canis guy and Fenninger never approves him, yeah, never John says, too. Hey Oh, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me, okay? Yeah, I can hear you, John. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. I, I thought my, I thought my mic cut out for a second. No, my, my internet seems to be buffering simply because I'm sharing this video. Mm. Yeah, your your audio was cutting out earlier a little bit. Well, let me just get. I'll, I'll show the video in a different way. Okay. Um, I wonder if me, because there's a little symbol on top of my screen showing. I'm going to play this video again later. Anyway, I just wanted to comment on it on a live stream. Um, yeah, a lot of the fenugreek. I mean, they're not. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, right. Yeah. Just said they're not they're not exposing Roman Catholicism shepherds and bastard and I, and I was trying to be polite with him this is months ago even King's Table would admit this because I think he saw the video and I did mention it I had a look at what shepherds and bastard was doing not that it was important particularly and I had a look at the websites and the Facebook stuff of some of the things he's connected with I read his testimony on this what was it Christian Life Institute, something or other. He's got testimony on there, if you can call it that. I did a video of it, and I've got the old video clips that I made. I was trying to drop a big hint, John, without wanting to hurt his feelings. I mean, his testimony read like, uh, I was born into a Christian family. Uh, my family fell away. I fell away. They came back to the Lord, apparently. So he came back, and I thought, hold on, he's got cultural Christianity there, so called. Not genuine faith in Christ. Because if any of my family were Christian and they fell away, I wouldn't follow suit. I'd let them crack on with it. I'd say something, obviously. And it, I mean, he's no pastor. Ed Fanninger acknowledges. He says that he's a sound teacher, and yet the other week, was it last week or the week before, he's trying to do something on John 1 verse 1 using uh, Sinaiticus manuscripts, which are from Alexandria and the corrupt and Catholic. Yeah. And uh, he's been caught out lying about, I mean, I don't follow Watchman D, he's been caught out lying about Watchman D. Uh and Ed Benninger, I sent you a video clip with the timestamp thingy, you know. Um, I asked you if you'd heard it the same way as I did. He mentioned the, the sacraments, so-called, are important or something. And I thought, hold on, what are you on about here? Sacraments, that's lovely. I mean, it's like... The sac I mean, it's like, and again, this goes back to the thing of how, you know, they won't reprove Catholics that comments on their channels. Ed Fitting won't reprove this Alex Canis guy who's a Catholic and everything. Yeah. And it's like, and they're, and they're like, they're doing Catholic types of things when they, you know, uh, try to prove certain doctrines. They'll go back to the writings of the church fathers, which a lot of them were, were essentially Roman Catholics. And it's yeah. like, you got to wonder, like, do, are they just, you know, closet Catholics themselves? Yeah. Catholics just happen to use a KJV. I mean, I don't know if you talked to 982. I told him about this this guy who's supposedly an ex Catholic, right? Hi, hi, Bear guys. with me. In today's video, I'm going to be re re reviewing um, Ryan Denling as. Bear with me. Sorry about that. I was just playing something. Um, I stumbled across this guy who was supposedly an ex-Catholic, John. He was using the KJV. Uh, and then a day or so later, I think I did a video on it, which was sort of when I thought, oh, I'm going to go back and check his uh, YouTube channel. Then he had done a video, uh, I think it was on Daniel's 70th week. And I think he was teaching post-trib or something that's 
obviously false teaching. I can't remember now. If you ask 982, you might remember. I don't know. Mm. But there seems to be a lot of so-called ex-Catholics that are now using the KJV and they still sound Catholic. Like ex-Catholics for Christ. I think he... He may well have left Catholicism, but not, he didn't leave yeah. far enough. It's, it's the kind of thing where they left Catholicism, but the, the kind of the mentality of Catholicism hasn't left them, basically. Yeah. Yeah. They, a lot of the ex-Catholics in the Deadlinger group, too, you know, a lot of them may have left the Catholic Church, the Catholic cult, but then that cult mentality of Roman Catholicism just hasn't left them, and they still have the same kind of mentality of us versus them and everything like that, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, there were some other things. I mean, oh, it doesn't matter now. I can upload the video later, but it's hardly surprising to me now, especially as of the stuff going on within the Fenningerites. Jason causing trouble in arguments with Linda Edmondson. I think you might be familiar with her. Yeah, I, I know who she is. Uh, and uh, Mary, oh, what's her name? Mary Miller or something? Mary Miller, yeah. These women in, the, in that crew, that group, have always got something vile or nasty to say. I mean, some of the comments they made about watching the I thought were totally disgusting and, and it's certainly not their place to correct uh, a male uh, I mean I don't agree, I probably don't agree with his teaching and stuff but it's certainly yeah he, he's there. a heretic yeah uh Watchman, Watchman D he's a heretic I looked at some of the stuff he, he's a full-on work salvation heretic but you know at the same time you know a woman shouldn't go around talking like just you know bad nothing a man like that that's the thing too no I've screencasted some of the comments yeah. It's hardly surprising that Tim ridicules Jason. He goes around causing trouble, John. He has done within that crew in the last week or so. I, I That's the thing, too. I, I, used to, I used to have sympathy for Jason, but it's like, you know, he won't be corrected on anything. He won't take any correction. You know, people have proved him wrong in, other, in some cases that he just won't change or anything. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and it's like you know, I feel kind of, you know, I feel kind of bad for him because he does have you know some problems or whatever. I, I don't know what he's got or whatever, but it's like you know, all he does is just attack people and make videos about people and cause problems and everything. He's going to keep attacking me now, according to him. I've got a screencast of the thing. It's in that video I was trying to upload. I was trying to play on here, but it was just buffering me thingy. Um, but now he's upset. Book of grief. Who? Book of Relief. Oh. They're still talking, I think, but I don't think Phil, I think that's his name, Book of Relief, is going to be allowing him into a live stream with him again. Mm. He'll let everybody. He seems to create drama where he's the centre of it. Yeah. And then they all it, huddle yeah. around Jason, which I think is what he, I think he's just attention seeking. Uh, stirring up strife within the, their own group. Not that I care. I mean, it's, that, that's their problem. Yeah, well, there's actually some scripture on that. Let me try to find the verse. Yeah, there's a really no, good verse on that. I'm not involved in somebody else's argument. Um, Here's a good verse on that. Proverbs uh, 17, 19. It says, He that loveth transgression loveth strife, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. You know, chances are, and, and as Jason guy, he does love transgression. You look at some people he subscribed to, some of the stuff he's into. I mean, he loves transgression, and thus he loves strife, according to Proverbs 17, 19. Yeah. Oh, and I should tell you, I was going to screencast them, but I deleted them all and spammed them. I got about 30 or 40 emails from him. Really? Yeah, he got one of the women to email me a load of stuff. He's done a video for me. The whole lot. Was, I mean, <laughs> I wish I'd have cast it. 20, 30 emails. Just wow. It. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny because he did a live stream attacking me as well because I was defending you. And he did a live stream about me and attacking me and saying, you know, 
I'm wrong for saying to call upon the name of the Lord and everything. It's like he just loves strife. I mean, that's just like, like Proverbs 17, 19 says. I've never mentioned call upon the name of the Lord, calling upon the Lord since the last time I had a conversation with Frank privately. It wasn't a live stream. And I gave him my understanding of what calling upon the Lord is. Because it's more than just so-called prayer. There's other things connected with it. Prayer, yeah. worship, giving, things like that. It, and there's only one verse in in the New Testament. I think I should double check it where it's referenced in the New Testament. Calling upon the Lord. I think it might be in Romans. It's Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 9 through 13. No, he, I mean, he lied about me. I can't remember exactly what he said now. I should quote him exactly. But I, he said, oh, if you don't believe the gospel, you probably don't believe Romans 10. Well, I believe all the gospel. I believe Romans 10 as well. It's all God's word. And, uh, yeah, I believe what, I mean, you know, if it's not one thing he says, it's something, it must be something else. I mean, he's just twisting things out of shape. It's, I mean, he calls it, he calls it, he calls it the Romans 10 cult too. It's like, none of us are part of any cult of Romans 10. Like, like how, how does that even work? Sorry, what was that, John? And I was, yeah, I was saying he also calls it, you know, the quote Romans 10 cult. It's like, um, how, how is there, how is there a cult based off of verse, you know? Yeah. Oh, and it's funny too because he gets he gets upset when we call Fenninger a cult leader, but then he calls us a cult cultist. You know, it's like, okay. Well, uh, reflect upon the word. Uh, you're not blocked. You got, didn't he get into the live stream yesterday, John? Um, I don't remember. I think it was the live stream the day before. Might have been. I don't know. Reflect upon the word. I haven't. Uh, blocked here. I mean, John is a manager on my YouTube channel. I, I haven't blocked him either. I, I didn't even know he, was, he even knew about this channel. Oh, no, I'm not saying you did, John, but you'd be able to check that I, that I haven't blocked him. You'd be able to see that. Oh. I think you should be able to. I I, no, I haven't blocked him either. No. I'll go in and check. I don't think I have. Uh... I did mention, ask, I did ask him about the King James Version, but he, he asked me if I had a problem with women, and no, I don't. I just have a problem with women pre uh, presuming to teach. And women who just run their mouth against people and that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, I mean, the one thing that really nailed it for me, John, is that eight-hour live stream, if you remember it. Yeah, I, I still have it saved on my drive. Yeah, five hours of whinging, John, and how I got through it, I don't know. But towards the end, she started sort of thinking that she can speak for us, saying, oh, we don't trust you, blah, blah. Talking to Amir and uh, who was the other guy, I forget now. Uh, and that was it. I mean, I kicked her out twice, she didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, hold, hold one sec. Hold, hold, hold that thought. I just want to quickly respond to reflect uh, to uh, the thing of, of Romans chapter 13, trying to connect it with Acts 2.21 and Joel 2.32. I did. I actually did a video uh, redressing that. I did a video refuting that. So I'll, I'll link you the video um, because I know Fenrir, you tried to make that connection. But uh, yeah, I did a video addressing that. I've got no problem with you. Reflect upon the word. I do wish people wouldn't make assumptions about me, though, John, because I don't have a problem with women. Um, I just have a problem with female teachers, so-called teachers, presuming to teach men. I do not put up with women, any female speaking up for me, uh, or speak presuming to speak for me. Well, I, I did a video... I did a video a couple of days ago called God Hates Feminism, where I read from Numbers 12, showing that God hates it when a woman just pipes up and runs her mouth against people. Yeah. 
it's not right, John. It, it never seems seemly, does it? Yeah, it never does. It's right out of the Garden of Eden, that sort of behaving from these women. Yeah, this kind of rebellious mentality of, you know, oh, we're just going to go around and just, you know, talk trash about people and everything. Yeah. This guy, I mean, I've never, you see, Jason, right from the get-go, I mean, he even went to King's Table about it, because he emailed me, King's Table did, about going in a live stream with him. And I got a really bad feeling about doing that. The discernment was, uh, it's not a good idea. And really, over the last couple of months, he's proved me right. Especially after that live stream with Jeremy Carter and Max Bauer. That was a, a proper gloat, gloat fest. Yeah. One last kind of thought. One last thought I want to put on the women of the Fenrir group. If you read Proverbs chapter seven, verse ten to twenty, it describes the attributes of a harlot, and it pretty much sums up the Fenririte women, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Proverbs seven, ten to twenty. <clears throat> uh, I've got to say I'm not surprised. I don't agree with the phraseology, but Brian's comment about Jason. Sing, sing, girling. He said, being a, a devilish imp. Okay, I could agree, disagree with the phraseology. I think, but I'm not surprised that he, he he speaks about Jason in that fashion. I personally, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised either because Jason, he just attacks you and he, he kind of pushes you to that point where you just kind of mock him almost, and he pushes you to that point where you just, you know, you cut, you, you kind of like you push back against him, so you fight back against him. Yeah, but he's desperate for the interaction, John. He wants you to respond. Yeah. This isn't a response video to him, but I'm just making a point. There's something seriously wrong. With that Fenninger group, for various reasons, I think it's Catholic. Could be. Shepherd's ambassador, I don't know what, is he Catholic? So called Anglican or something? Uh, I mean, as I said, I sent you that email with the. I think I'll go and search it out and I'll, I'll get it downloaded and. Where he goes on about the sacraments. I mean, that's just Catholic. Yeah, Ed it's Fen Roman Catholicism. Yeah, Ed Fenninger is an ex Catholic, so called. Yeah, apparently, apparently he is. And it seems that he might be another one of those guys where he may have left Catholicism, but Catholicism hasn't left him. Yeah, or if it has left him, it hasn't left him completely. Yeah, he still has his, he still has the Catholic mindset pretty much. Yeah. But the the one way of detecting a cult, John, and I'm sure you're very, very aware of this now, especially in the last year or so. Yeah. All you have to do is contradict one of them politely as you did that day. Yeah. I thought John's going when I saw that I thought I wonder what's going to happen because this, because John's gone really light on being, I don't like the word attacking, but I mean, he's gone, he's, th this is super polite. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, like, it's like, I, I was trying to be as nice and calm as possible, and then like, all hell breaks loose the next day. It's crazy. He apologized for making the video and saying, look, you know, this isn't an attack, and this, do you know what I mean? And Yeah. Yeah, I just had a problem with it. I've got to really, go, I've really got to get a new laptop, John. Mm. Anyway, um, well, there was a couple of other pictures I put up on that video. Uh, I'll just have a quick look. Just but it, it was, you know, it was just funny too. Also, you know, when I came out, I was trying to be as loving and just calm as and graceful as possible. But then it's like that that fateful day I did that. You know, that was enough for them to realize, oh, I'm lost now because I. Question the cult leader.
when you when you question the the leader or even one of the the inner circle you're going to have problems yeah cult members don't like it when you speak out against their cult leader you know that's just how it goes sorry about this john i'm just trying to find the other bit so i can oh, okay yeah. Christian Leaders Institute, it's Calvinism, and that is the one that Shepherd's Ambassador uh, got his so called qualifications from. Hey, I'll, I'll bring it back. Just give, just, I'll bring it back. I'm just give myself a glass of water. I'll bring it back. Okay, John. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can see that on screen. I'll just check. On screen. Yeah, is Calvinist. So, There I am. He's a Calvinist? I didn't have time to look at all these. Uh, when I did a video regarding this, the Shepherd's Ambassador, I told him I'd read his testament. I was just trying to drop a hint and I let him knew, know what, what I thought. And then I asked him, do you want me to delete delete the video? And he said, oh, yeah, if you want to. And I said, well, do you want me to? And it, he said, oh, yeah, go delete. So I did it. And then I left it. And then he doubles down with this stuff using the Sinaiticus. So I put him back up again. I mean, and then he was caught out with lying about somebody. Just weird. What's going yeah. on with them? Do, I mean, they, they don't seem to correct each other, John. Well, the thing is, is it, it's funny, they'll correct them. No, we're proved. Don't even have to have I mean, isn't that. You still there, John? Yeah, I'm still here, yeah. I was just oh. quickly typing something. Well, I went to that, I call it Patooty Tooty, that PA220. Uh, he does his uh, pastoral so called role and, and, and his so called upbeat introduction. Welcome to. Well, hello there, or something like that. I can't even mimic it. Uh, protecting the sheep and all that sort of thing. So I, I've had a look at that website. Nearly every one of them are women in that so-called ministry. In that uh, PA220 PA online ministry thing. Yeah. No. He's no pastor. Not in a... 
Yeah, he he's you know, it's like he thinks he knows it. I mean, obviously I'm not again Watchman D, he's a heretic, he's a false teacher. But you know, when Shepherd's Ambassador debated yeah. Watchman D on the whole Trinity thing, it's like, you know, he thought he had all the answers, but and Watchman D just kept refuting all of his points and you know. Yeah. He got torn to rags, didn't he, really? Yeah. He got mauled. Yeah, pretty much, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not gloating over that, but it was so obvious. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm. well, he is. What was that? Yeah. Oh, he's still there. Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah, yeah. Video. People will have to work it out for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. He's vindictive. There's a certain amount of vindictiveness about that group. I mean, I don't care. If Jason's going to keep making videos about me, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Yeah, he, he has no life. He, all he does is sit around making videos about people all day. He's a vicious, malicious individual. Yeah. So have you un uploaded that video yet, John? The one that you had because you need to edit it. Waiting for it to process. Right. It's almost done processing. Yeah. Clidio is a good video making thingy. Yeah. I, I use Phil Moore. It's the kind of one I like. Who? Oh, uh, Wonder Share Phil Moore. That's the, that's the one. That's the one I use. Is it good? Is it? Uh, it's it's good for beginners. You want good more advanced stuff? Could be Adobe. Uh, what what is it? Adobe Premiere or whatever. But Wonder Share Phil Moore. It's it's pretty good. You get a lot of good features and stuff. So it, it's my preferred uh, app I use. Yeah. So, I mean, did you, was you at work last night, John? Was you? Oh, uh, no. I, I start working about five days. I, I got the job about a week ago, and it takes 10 days for it to about, oh. for, takes 10 days for it, for me to actually, like, start working. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I did block uh, reflect upon the world, but it was it did seem a bit aggressive actually towards me. Yeah, making assumptions that I had some sort of problem with women, which I don't. I did answer him, and I think the comment went missing. Yeah, I, I I'm currently, currently sorry I wasn't paying attention. I'm just working on a playlist. Of uh, videos exposing Fenninger. So just, you know, I'll, I'll send that to you when I'm done with it. Okay, John. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it turns out that one of the big heresies of Fenninger is that he says that eternal security is not part of the gospel and that someone can reject eternal security and still be saved, which is a heresy. Wow. Eternal security, you just need to read. 17 that's true lord and that's the thing too is that if someone rejects because understanding eternal security is just understanding that god is who saves you and god is who controls your salvation and you don't save yourself by your righteousness or your holiness and if someone rejects eternal security they're they're saved by works because they're having the work to keep that salvation so if someone who rejects eternal security, they're lost. There's no, there's, there's no way around it, you know. So for him to say eternal security is not part of the gospel, it's an error. Paul say that who, who, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Yeah, I think that's uh, Philippians. 
I'll try to pull the verse, but yeah, it's God, it's God, when you have a changed life, it's like, you don't have to change yourself and earn your salvation based on your holiness, it's God who does the changing inside you, basically. Even grace is grace. Yeah, I mean, the fact you're even able to get, the fact you're even able to get saved is through God's grace. Yeah. Try to find the verse. It is. Oh, I hit the wrong. It's it's uh, Philippians one six. It says, "Be confident of this very thing, which he which sorry that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ." So it's God who's who's doing the work inside you. You don't do it yourself. Or you don't sanctify yourself, as the conditional security heretics will say. Still there? You can't sanctify yourself, really. Yeah, you yeah. can't. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, sorry, your, your mic yeah. cut out for a second. But yeah, it's the Holy Spirit who does it for you. Like, it's the Holy Spirit who seals you according to Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and, and 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22. You don't seal yourself or you don't have to. And of course, they'll try to say, I heard some of them say, well, you can become unsealed or that seal can be broken. Well, that's the truth. If that's the case, then somehow that means you're more powerful than God because John chapter 10, verse 28 to 30 says, you can't be plucked out of God's hand and you won't perish, but somehow you can make yourself perish. You know, ridiculous. And the other thing, some of the, these novices don't understand what sanctification is exactly yeah they have no they, they they don't understand spiritual spiritual regeneration the the um, paul and i think peter does as well when he writes to the ephesians colossians uh to the saints at Colossi. yeah yeah he's writing he's to save people to christ yeah, he, he's writing to save people and instructing like Romans 6, 1 to 2, Romans 6, 15, uh, Romans 12, 1 to 2. Talks, you know, Paul is writing to save people and telling them to, you know, uh, live holy. Let the Holy Spirit sanctify you. Don't use grace as a license to sin and that kind of stuff. Uh, and the big difference is that it's the Holy Spirit who does it. See, these conditional security people, they have, they have no uh, knowledge of sanctification by the Holy Spirit. They think they have to sanctify themselves by their righteousness. So when they say conditional, conditional on who? Exactly. Yeah. If, uh, if it's conditional you know. security, that means it's probably conditional on yourself. Meaning, it's like it's just like Isaiah 14, 12 to fifteen, where Satan was saying, "I'll become like the Most High, I'll ascend into heaven," and that kind of thing. It's the same mentality, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why I say that conditional security, people who reject eternal security, that's why I say it's satanic to reject eternal security because you're basically having the same mentality as Satan, the same self-righteous, all ascending to heaven by my own righteousness mentality as Satan in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Well, what they're saying is, you know, if, if, they, if they don't believe in uh, eternal security, uh, the saying, oh, well, God can't do what he says he's going to do. Well, really, the whole issue behind I'll that is that, to the end. And, and what it really comes down to is that they're basically saying, he that, can, that, and, he, and he will. He do. can. Yeah, well, uh, 2 Timothy 4. Second Timothy 4.18 says God will preserve us into his heavenly kingdom. And the thing is, too, you know, the issue of eternal security is that, you know, if, if what the real issue comes down to is that they think that sin is somehow more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. And that somehow when you sin, that sin somehow overpowers the blood of Jesus Christ and makes you lose your salvation, apparently. You know, that's kind of what, that's what it comes down to, really. They think sin is more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I was going to quickly read a verse of scripture that kind of, that these guys, you know, here's a good really verse of scripture that really proves eternal security. And these guys who reject it can't handle this, this passage. Uh, it's first Peter chapter one, verses three to five. This, you throw this at this, you throw this at them and they get, they can't handle it. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. 
Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation and ready to be revealed in the last time. You're kept by the power of God, not by your own righteousness. But an incorruptible inheritance. That fadeth not away, too. It doesn't fade away. Not be sullied or, or, or. It says, it says, it says, it says, faith not away. It says, reserved in heaven for you. You know, it compares to Ephesians two, your seed in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Yeah, it's a bit like yeah. I, we've, yeah. the train is waiting for us, but we haven't gone to pick it up yet. If you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like our lease for our mansion in heaven. They're waiting for us. We just have, we just have to go and you know, just move in basically. See, there's a problem with this works thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. The work of God, of the Holy Spirit in your life. I mean, how can you not be changed when you get filled with the Holy Spirit when the whole of the Godhead bodily dwells within you? How can you yeah. not be changed by that? I mean, it's like you mean to tell me that the drug dealer keeps stealing drugs, the drunkard stays a drunkard, the fornicator keeps fornicating. No, you know, the change comes in. You... you you're, you're, what was it, Second Corinthians 5, 17, you're a new creature in Christ, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new, you know? But, you see, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yes. And we, we, we sort of have, we have to acknowledge sin for what it is. We have to see, th by, through discernment and, and study of Scripture, faith comes by hearing, and comes by the Word of God. If we are, convicted that something is is sinful then of course we mark and avoid it or yeah. them or or her or whatever and there's also we the thing to, of two we, go ahead we have to respond to that john yeah we have to respond to that it's all right here in the gospel if we don't respond to it and do something about it we all do something about what we believe hopefully and so when I heard the gospel, I did something about it. Gordon shared the gospel to me. I got into God's word, uh, the King James Bible, within a week or so. I mean, I didn't know anything about the arguments about NIV and King James, you know. In to and, 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 and like the prison chaplaincy aren't going to tell you. But I did something about what I believed, what Gordon was showing me from the scriptures. Exactly, I yeah. Responded to that, to the word of mm -hmm. God, not to Gordon, but to the word of God, to Scripture. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're going now. I think you're going. I'm starting to get some eye, starting to get some eye strain. I have the, you know, get going now. I, I'm starting to get eye strain. I can only do it for so long before I get eye strain. But uh, we could do another live stream later if you want. If you want. Oh yeah, I'd love to, John. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just starting to get eye strain, so yeah. my eyes are hurting, so I just have to step away. Do you need some proper glasses or something? I actually do. I do plan on actually ordering some of the blue light glasses because, you know, I don't like any eye strain. All right, John. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. All right. God bless you, brother. You. Thanks for coming. God. God bless you. Thank you. Right, I'm closing now.